opportunity. You know, it. Um, I still I talk about it a lot now, actually. So it's kind of it's kind of good that you bring that up because I have a chance to reflect on it maybe differently each time because I do have different thoughts about it. Mm-hmm. The the overriding thought that I have is that first of all, I never got over it. But you, you you move on, and I equate it to having a death in the family, a death of a loved one, a death of a spouse or child. Mm. It's it's rises to that level. Mm. But you know, typically you do move on with life, of course. But you never you never really get over it. Of course, you never forget about it. Uh, it's always something that is uh, you know something sad something hard to think about but it's life you know it's life that's what it's like i've had a chance to move on of course and i've done other things with my life and business and other things uh interesting enough i'm back in wrestling again but um uh, you know sometimes our best plans i think there's a, a little adage about this the best laid plans of mice and men whatever <laughs> however that goes but yes. um Sometimes, no matter how much you plan, how much you train, how focused and ready you are, I mean, I was, you know, a two-time world champion prior to 80. I feel like I was going to win, you know. Um, One of the only ways, I think the only way I was not going to win is if there wasn't going to be an Olympic Games, and that's what happened. Right. So, um, so sometimes things happen out of our control completely mm-hmm. that we can't do anything about it. Uh, you know, people, I know people who've gone through deaths of children, you know, I, uh, close friends, actually, uh, I've known people that who were stricken with a illness, a disease, cancer, or whatever. I mean, people who have all of a sudden divorce, you know, I've, I've gone through that. It was yes, of course. just these things you, you just don't plan on, of course. And you, 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 you wish they didn't happen, but they devastate you. And they, they, you know, it knocks you down to a place where some of us don't ever get up again. So that, that's the whole jewel of life. Right. It, and I, and I got to experience it at the highest level, you know, the level of, you know, being this, this athlete in a pure sport, did everything right, um, you know, things were going in the right direction, it just seeming, seemingly I was going to be on a Wheaties box. Not, not that that's a big deal, but, I mean, that's what you think about. No, you had the trajectory, certainly, not to interrupt you, and the consensus be- between the entire Olympic team, world team, other coaches, NCAA, was, this is Lee Camp, this is his games, and it was without question. I mean, so it was certainly taken from you. I, it's it's remarkable to hear you detail it in a way because it had to be a loss, a significant loss like that. It it, it, it was um, again like a death. I mean, or even it, it's even worse than being stricken with an illness because at least there's an explanation for that. Like I've got cancer, or I've got this or that, or a car accident, or. Or I could have understood if I got hurt in practice and couldn't compete because that's something that you can point to as a reason or some something that I did to myself, whether whatever I did, you know. Um, but to have it just arbitrarily taken away, and that brings me to the point as a parent, you know, when you raise a child, when they when they're able to start to communicate with you, you know what I where I'm going with this is. Children, they always ask why. They 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 want to understand what's going on. Right. And science has told us, child psychologists has, has taught us that we have to allow children to explore that. Mm-hmm. Where more in my era and 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 people older than me, we were just told to shut up. No, you know, it's like my way or no way. You just you know, you got spanked, you got all that stuff. So it was a tough way to grow up. But in our era, you know, I was met raised my kids to be able to be inquisitive, to ask questions, to want to know the reason for things. Yeah. There was no reason, no explanation for this. And that, that made it even harder to understand. And uh, when I finally learned the politics of it, it became ugly. I mean, there was some politics. You may know the politics of this thing that, yeah. that became ugly to where... Um, Jimmy Carter and his administration threatened the United States Olympic Committee because 
they're separate entities. The the US the USOC could have sent a delegation to the Olympic Games without President Carter's approval. They could have done that. And it came down to a vote. It was a vote, an independent vote. The USOC and US Olympic Committee and their members, I think it's, I don't know, 50 plus members. Mm -hmm. Presentations were made, the whole bit. And if they would have voted to the affirmative that we're sending a team, a team would have been sent. Wow. But a presentation was made by Jimmy Carter's staff. I think it was vice president at the time. I think it was. Uh, well, I wish I knew. <laughs> maybe Mondale, maybe. Maybe it was not Mondale. But it was a presentation made before the vote. And that, it was blackmail. It was like, okay, you're free to make the choice you want to make. But let me just inform you that uh, the U.S. government, we are prepared to withdraw all of our funding from the USOC. So you won't have funding. In, in effect, you will collapse. There'll be no, I mean, it, it was a threat that they certainly wouldn't have. I mean, but they couldn't get away with that now with the internet, with people protesting. Right. But back then, there was no internet, nothing. People, people just, oh, but yeah, there were about 70 members. I think it was 150 members or something uh, or whatever. There were about 70 members that voted to the affirmative that we should go. So those people st stood up and they, 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 they made sure that in their minds, they were doing the right thing, regardless of what the administration was saying. Um, I wrote a little piece on that, just a Facebook post, and I, I have all the facts in there, and I'll try to resurface that. But, yeah, I'll look but, for that. Yeah. But, but that, that's what happened, and that, taught, that presentation was made, and then the vote happened, and I'm sure that made a difference in how people voted. Because there was a lot of lobbying, a lot of athlete presentations. Yeah. Uh, there were some people who were athlete representatives, and there was one woman, um, I can't remember her name right now, um, but she asked the, you know, the delegation from the government, from the president and his staff, you know, by, by the athletes doing this, is it going to save any lives? And of course, the answer was like, no. Mm -hmm. By doing this, um, is there going to be anything that's going to uh, discernibly move us forward as a as a country, as a democracy, as as free people? And the answer was no. Mm -hmm. And then it was well, well, why are we doing this? And they just shut her up, basically. And so, so. This person, I think it was, uh, oh, I can't think of her name right now, but she was actually asking questions so that the delegation could hear that this clearly was not going to solve, was not going to accomplish anything. And so, oh, yeah. <laughs> so the sentiment was moving in the direction of the athletes, like, okay, yeah. we're gonna, probably going to go. And then the president uh, and his staff pulled out that, that 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 you know that wild card they had yeah and they flashed it and I wonder what would have happened if we would have voted to go anyway that that would have been interesting you would have won and everybody would have been with you and rejoiced if, well that, you know what what breaks my heart as you detail this as somebody who had an Olympic dream it breaks my heart because the, everybody's missing the sentiment of the Olympics and what it means for a country and represent your country in that way and no it's not as we, it is so trivial to compare it to saving lives. It's not a fair comparison for anything. Like, but what you do and what you bring back and restore from a unity perspective and championship and all the tenets of sport are, so, are all so equally important. Like, it's sad to me that, uh, you know, they missed, they missed the Olympic spirit, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, Dan Gable was our coach, and he was gearing up the wrestling team to go over to Russia and win and kick their butts. Like, yeah. Know? You know, make them uh, sorry that you know that 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 this American team was coming. You know, Who better than a motivated Dan Gable in 1980, the coach. Yeah, and, oh and we had a great team then. We had a we had, we came off of a uh, probably a record history breaking performance in the 1979 World Championships. Mm -hmm. Out of out of ten weight classes, we had seven medals. So we were on track to really do really well the very next year. 
So, um, but 